Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back to another reflection from the front porch. Cliff Ravenscraft here. And for just a moment, I'm going to talk to my audio journal subscribers and anybody who may be watching the replay later of this Facebook live stream. So for those of you who are listening via the audio journal, I'm sitting out here on the front porch of our home. It is a beautiful sunny day today. It is currently 67 degrees. There's a light breeze, a little bit of a chill in the air, but certainly perfect spring weather for something I enjoy doing in the spring, uh, these reflections from the front porch. It's where I come out here and just share what's on my mind, what's going on in my life as it relates to just the abundance and, and joy that is afforded to us if we are only willing to be on the consistent, relentless lookout for the abundance and joy that's, that's available. All right, so let me just share with you something that's new in my world. Uh-oh, I think I just dropped my, my pen. It's not a big deal. But uh, I went out recently and purchased a brand new paper journal, uh, a leather-bound paper journal. And inside of my journal, I write down all sorts of fun things. And the reason why I'm excited about this, it's, it, it's been years since I've had a physical journal. And the reason for that is that I used to use these as kind of like my own personal diary of things that are going on in my life. I would write into them. It'd be very detailed, a lot of very private, heart, deep heart issues kind of things, a lot of angst that I might be feeling. Um, I would write about those things into a leather-bound physical journal, and I probably kept it for years, and, and I have... I have probably had something similar to this, um, about six or seven of them. And I currently have all but one of them still in my possession. We would celebrate our wedding anniversary, Stephanie and I, we would go out and every year we would write down, we would dream about what we want to accomplish for the next year. You know, Stephanie and I, we are dreamers. We've been married for 22 plus years now. And every single year we like to sit down and say, what do we want to accomplish? What are our personal goals? What are our goals as a married couple? What do we want to achieve over this next year? And we both brought our journals to write in what our goals were. And the whole idea was that the next time, the next year, when we came together on our anniversary, we would sit down and we would first go back and look at last year's goals. And we would evaluate where are we on those? How did we do? Why did we, you know, what, once we evaluated where we were in those, we discuss why or how things turned out the way that they did, whether we achieved them or didn't achieve them. And then we would sit down and make a point to say, okay, well, let's talk about what do we want to do next year? Do we want to move any of these forward if, if necessary or whatever the case may be? And we, that was the, that was a, that was a longstanding tradition for Stephanie and I. And this had to have happened, I don't know, I, I'm going to guess just seven years ago. Uh, maybe it was longer, I'm not sure. But we went to the Cheesecake Factory for our anniversary. And I remember specifically, you know, there was a long wait. I went into the restroom to use the restroom and uh, I, I set down my journal, I'm sure, uh, there at the sink. And then uh, the next thing you know, we, you know, I go back out hanging with Stephanie in the lobby waiting for us to be seated. We got seated and we had dinner. So we had our, we ordered dinner. We talked while we were waiting for our food. Dinner came, we finished our meal, and then we go for our ceremonial time of pulling out our journals to then sit down and review our goals and, and set new goals. The only problem is that, well, when I went to go get my journal, I couldn't find it. It wasn't in my seat anywhere. And then I realized, oh, you know what? I must have left it in the bathroom. The only problem is, though, is when I went back to the bathroom, it was not there. Of course, I went to the desk, you know, up front and said, hey, did anybody notice a journal that they found and report it missing? No. Nope. I called the next day. And anyway, so, so my journal was nowhere to be found. And I got to tell you that that was a huge bummer for me. And the reason why is because, well, first and foremost, there was a ton of private personal information in there. 
And, you know, it's like, oh my gosh. I, and, and that, of course, that got me to thinking from that point forward, if I ever decide to get another journal, just how personal will I make it? <laughs> uh, because that journal was filled with some very personal stuff. And not to mention the fact that I love having my journals. I love being able to go back and see what I had written, you know, so much, so long ago. And just reflecting on an earlier part of life and some of my fears and anxieties, it's always fun to see how much you grow personally and even professionally. And and the things that seemed like the biggest challenges on the work, on the face of this planet, it's like there's no way I'm ever going to get through this. Uh, that you look back and it's like, you know, that really wasn't that big of a deal. And it kind of brings some sort of understanding that, that you're never given anything that you can't handle in life, that everything's going to work out fine, that, that you're committed to, to seeing through, things through. And as long as you have standards in life, you always find a way to live up to your standards. So the long story short, I, I was just really frustrated by losing that journal and I'm like, man, from this point forward, if I'm going to lose, that was a, I think that journal covered an entire year of my life. And to lose a year of documentation of your life that you've, you've cared so much to document, that's, um, that was a ch big deal. Hi, babe. How are you? Not cool, dude. What? <laughs> I'm not even allowed in the kitchen <laughs> with my boots on. Hold on. Hold on. During your calls. Hold on. Oh, wrong, wrong view there. Wrong view. Hello. Hello. So, <laughs> was that too loud for you? Or, or you, you might as well have been sitting next to me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Serena can hear you and she's in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny only because it's true. I know. Because she was on a Zoom call. So you were, you were doing your mastermind call. and. Was. I thought it was, I was trying to be soft and then I got louder. You don't know the definition of soft. I know. I'm sorry, baby. Were you able to finish your call? Yeah, we You could have just said, Serena, hold on, I'll be back. And no, we just go, laughed at you and it was all good. I'm going to go, I'm going to go shut down his live stream. <laughs> no. Uh, just, how was your call? It was good. Awesome. Hey, do you want to tell people about your mastermind group? Is this an opportunity for you to market your, your mastermind yeah, groups? Yeah, my mastermind what? groups. Tell them about it. Well, Come out here. It's bright out here. Oh, go get you a seat and come and sit with me. I can fix dinner. Hold on, let me get sunglasses. You can get sunglasses and a chair. <laughs> sunglasses and a chair. So I'm going to be joined by my beautiful wife, Stephanie, on this beautiful day. Cool. All right, so, Stephanie, I was just telling people here about the fact that I have a brand new physical journal. And I was explaining yeah. to them how I went the past several years without owning a physical journal, no longer committing to documenting my life and my thoughts and the things that are going on to a physical journal because of the, I, one, that you lost. Of the one I lost at the Cheesecake Factory. How many years ago would you say that was? I was uh, guessing about seven or eight years. It's been more than that because uh, we've been here five Okay, so fair it's, enough. It's probably been like about eight or nine years ago, maybe ten. It's it's probably been ten to twelve years ago. Okay, so it's, so think about that. Almost at, at least a decade, then I would say, since I've owned a physical journal, and I used to write a lot, didn't I? Mm -hmm. I mean, we've got tons of them upstairs. Uh, where just I've, not that one. Just not that one, and and I was explaining. Is there's some private stuff. I mean, there's, yeah. I mean, it's like I would pour out my heart. I mean, and you know, the stuff I used to write to you in letters and it's like, you think, and even some of that stuff, it's like later I, I regretted writing some of that stuff, didn't I? I kept those. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I, I was explaining that I, I have gotten a physical journal back, but that's not important right now. I think I want to take just a moment and, and, and veer off into a new topic and talk about your mastermind group. Okay. So tell me if, uh, real briefly here for the folks who are watching live on Facebook and those who will watch the replay on YouTube live and also our audio journal subscribers are listening in on audio only. But uh, for those who are interested in learning more about your, your mastermind group, what made you first decide that, that you wanted to pursue something on the business side of things? And, and what was that decision like for you? What made me 
me decide I wanted to pursue. Yeah, so you have a paid so. you have paid <laughs> products and services now, and you you're building your own brand because you have a message that that you feel is important, and there you have a target audience that you're looking to reach. So there, let's just assume that nobody out there knows any of this stuff, and also realize that Rusty's going to listen to this. Right. And he's going to use this to help Ooh, write your... so I can mark audio journal off yes. when I go in to make... This is the audio journal. Oh, looky there. See, I, it's it's called repurposing content. Yes. Um. So I think, I think for me, I always... I've always known that... I've always known that I was called to do something more. Does that make sense? Something I've, more. So, hold on, I'm not done. Okay always interrupting me to do something more to do something that was more uh, personal and more me than you yep and by that that what you're talking about the fact that we've always podcasted together mm -hmm. since december 2005 uh, and we started about TV shows and stuff like that. I obviously felt that there was an opportunity for ministry and eventually turned into an opportunity for business and income generation from having a message and having an audience and stuff like that. And I brought you into a lot of those things through Family from the Heart and stuff like that. But you even toyed for a while with having your own personal podcast called Full-Time Mom. I did. Uh, but that, even that branched into something else. Sarah came in and, and mm -hmm. you guys were doing it together. And then you, you no longer had your own thing. But you're, for that season of your life, it wasn't your main concern to build that because you had... It wasn't... Your main calling was mom. Uh, right. Being When I started the Full-Time Mom podcast, it was never about... I think a lot of people got the wrong impression of that show because it was full-time mom and I was a stay-at-home mom. That was never the intention. The intention was that as a mom, that is a full-time job that we never quite hang that hat up. That is some, you know, Megan is 19 years old and lives three hours away on campus at college, but I'm still her mom every day when I wake up. I'm still the person that she comes to for advice, whether she wants to follow it or not. And, and so while I never, I never thought that I never started, I never created, that's the word created uh, full time mom with the intention of starting my platform there. I can't say that it wasn't a thought in my mind that that would be a building place. And I think the first time I remember you ever telling me, uh, not right now, but being here, I feel like there's something stirring inside of me that one day I want to create my own personal brand and I want to be maybe a speaker. I want to maybe have my own courses and, and my own thing. And it was, it was at platform conference. 2013. Yeah. Was it that? I thought it was earlier than that. No, you're right. 2013. 2013. It was the Dallas, Texas one, wasn't mm -hmm. it? So you, that was Lisa Turkers that you, you heard her speak. You heard, you saw Amy Porterfield and then you heard me speak and, and, the, and I Michael. I hear you speak all the time. You really don't affect me as much as you think you do. Oh, wait a second. <laughs> do you really, you hear me, but do you listen to me speak? No. <laughs> yeah. So. We're just joking. She listens sometimes. <laughs> we'll go with that. We'll go with that. I do. Hey, Scott Harvey's watching. Hello, Scott Harvey. Scott Harvey. Megan was just texting about Grace earlier. Yep. We were just talking about them. And so... <coughs> so you had, you said... So even when, I mean, because... Back in 2013, But you, going back to starting Full-Time Mom, it was... I knew that that could be a platform, but I also knew that that wasn't the time. I have... Since I decided to stay... Well, since we decided that I would stay home with our kids... I had a contentment in that role in that was, that was my job. That was what I was choosing to do. And I've enjoyed every moment of it. And, um, and my episode of thriving mosaic later today will be about balance. 
and as I am starting this business and doing more things and having more things, what are my non-negotiables as from my family's perspective, what am I not willing to miss? What, what am I not willing to sacrifice to make, to make my dream happen? Yeah. Your and dream so, of having a powerful impact and influence on the lives of women. Yes. Helping them embrace their true identity and experience freedom. Yes. So... See, I listen to you. You do listen to me. He listens to me a lot better than I listen to him. I'm not even going to Gina's pretend. here. Hi, Gina. I hope you had a fantastic walk. So, in 2013, that was like summertime-ish, I think, that I decided that, you know, I do want to have... I, I do want to build my own platform, and I do want to have these things and, and do these things. And then it was in November of 2014 that I remember asking myself and, and the group of, of people that I was sitting with that day, you had a one day mastermind with Ray Edwards that I joined in on. And so in 2014, I remember very specifically asking, do I start this now or, or do I wait until my kids are gone? Do not, out of my house? Do I wait until all four, all three of them are out of the house or do I start now? And I honestly, um, came, well, no, I didn't. I'm trying, I'm trying to word this very correctly. So uh -oh. we had, no, on that trip while asking myself that question, um, we experienced what I will describe as a childcare nightmare. Yeah. And, and within that, a lot of, for me, a lot of my own personal triggers were, um, activated and I really struggled through that. And I made a commitment to myself and to my um, children. And I shared that with Cliff that I would not leave my kids for a week meaning a whole school week, a five day period of time that they were in school anymore. Right. While, while they were in school, I will not do that. And there, there have been exceptions. We have gone on vacation and, and we have done that. We've been on a cruise, but I haven't since 2014, I, I don't, I don't leave them often. Right. And, uh, when I do, it's something that is discussed and planned and it helps that now they're older and can, you know, drive themselves places and feed themselves and stuff like that. But so when I'm asking myself, do I start now while I'm, while I'm here and in the moment and I'm passionate about it and, or, or do I wait? And my question was answered for me and so I continued on in my contentment to fulfill my, my role and my promise to my family. And, and quite frankly, that, at, that, at that time, you felt like that is your calling. I mean, it, this... No, it, 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 not it, it, it. I didn't feel it was. That's, it is. It still is. Yes. And, and what I love about that, it, it, it's not just a contentment to, to be to fill the role of mom. Your ministry in this world, if, if I, and tell me if I'm accurate in, in what I'm saying and what I'm thinking here. Your ministry in this world wasn't just to our children, which, of course, in and of itself is a powerful thing. But your, your target audience for your gifts that God, and talents that God has given you was for our children and specifically for all of the friends of our children. There have been many teenagers that have crossed the threshold of this house. And I... Your passion has always has been to what? To invest in them the same as I invest in my own kids. Exactly. And, and specifically what you've expressed to me and to several in the, others in the past is that your calling is to cre create safe environments where individuals can learn how to express or to experience freedom being who they truly are without any judgment. Absolutely. And every teenager that has crossed my front door has experienced that. Exactly. And so that's what you've been devoted to. That's what you've been, that's what you've created. And, and you've been not just, you haven't just been content doing that. You've been fulfilled doing that. 
Am I, Absol- no, right? absolutely right. Okay. Yes. So yes. it's not like you're just like, oh, man, I can't wait until this season of my life is so I can really get to what's next. Yeah, no, It's never been all. like that. No. So the thing is, is you've since gone to a, a several other events with me, but, mm-hmm. you know, not being away so long. And each, or during the summer when or, it's not during the school year. And each time that you've done it, you've like, hey, let's let's bring let's surface this discussion of what my what my next season of life will be after the kids are. And it was always after the kids are out of school. What who is my target audience? What is my message? What is, and we've had a lot of conversations. We've had about a this. whole lot of conversations <clears throat> about this. And so in June of 2017, our then 15 year old son went on vacation with Cliff's parents and he was gone for two weeks, right? He was gone for two weeks. Mm-hmm. And at the end of that trip, they were, they were at my in-laws lake house in Tennessee and, um, Matthew was sick and he wasn't feeling well and he really wanted to come home and not stay the extra four days that they were going to be on vacation. Also knowing that we were supposed to go, on a trip and so we were going to miss we were going to miss him and then it would have been another week before he would have seen the two of us right specifically me but, you know <laughs> whatever <laughs> well, it was funny it made you laugh you oh, did it made you laugh so on that we decided that we were going to go pick him up we did it round trip which took like 13 hours mm-hmm. and I always tell I always tell people that that car ride to Sevierville, Tennessee, was the best business meeting that Cliff and I have ever had. Yeah, hands down. And on that car ride, we started talking about what my what my message is and what my platform is, and specifically using the word platform. And Cliff Cliff said, "Well, what are you an expert in?" And I gave a very sarcastic response. I'm completely joking. And I said, well, the only thing that I, the only thing that I'm an expert in is freedom. Like freedom from not caring what people think about me. Freedom from living under the, the. Expectations of others. I was trying to find a descriptive word of what that makes me feel like. Live under the expectation of others. You know, that that suffocating, debilitating expectation of everyone around you. Um, Freedom from from breaking free of of um, past just just past because it's it's back here it's in the past and there's no reason to keep focusing on it i cannot be in the present fully myself if i'm looking behind me all of the time um and i i i was very i was very sarcastic in that moment the only thing that i am an expert in is freedom and cliff's like well why is that a joke yeah and, and, and why is the word only the qualifier there? I mean, being an expert in freedom is a pretty dang <laughs> awesome thing. Yeah. So we started we started talking about what products and services I could have and what. And who need, know, and who, who would you who reach needs with that? That and yeah, right. Who do I want my target audience to be and and what does that look like for me? And we had an amazing six hour drive and amazing conversation. We got our sick kid and I slept on the way back. It was fantastic. Yep. Uh, so actually, didn't I, I drive a little bit. You but did. Not a, not a lot. Um, I did sleep on that, on that trip. But then it was tabled. Oh, yeah. That was in, that they, was in they, June of like, 17. We it took was, notes on it. We, we took we, notes. It was fantastic. But we came home and, and that was tabled because it wasn't the right time. Matthew was a sophomore. Megan was a junior. It was, was in the sixth it was, grade. It was tabled except for the fact of pursuing it as a separate platform beyond what you were already doing. Right. Because one thing that I can say is that after that trip, you began to t- to take on that identity as the expert in freedom mm-hmm. to a whole new level with our kids and their friends. Would you agree with that statement? I think I would agree with that statement, but I don't know that I did it. I think you did it subconsciously. Right. That's what I said. I, was go- I, I don't think-, think I did it consciously. Well, it, the- it, it became my... It, 
here's the thing. I think it's so much of my identity already that it just naturally came forth. Yes. Like, does that make sense? Yes. And because you, I mean, you were accurate when you say the only, well, you said I'm an expert in freedom mm -hmm. and that is exactly what you had been doing. You have been creating an environment, a safe environment for our kids and their friends where they can experience freedom to be who they were created to be, not who others expect them to be. Exactly. Exactly. And so, and so I, I took on that. I, I continued to, to serve my children and every child who crosses my, my threshold, every child who climbs into my car for a ride home. Or um, on a field trip. Or on a field trip. And... And I just continued to be myself in my everyday life. And, and then something happened. Okay, what happened? Free the Dream Conference. <laughs> and then my husband comes home, I have, a, I have an idea. I have a dream! <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, it was, I have an idea. And those words usually get me in a lot of trouble. Not me, but, you know, they, they usually mean a lot of trouble. And They mean a lot of work sometimes. Yeah, so that was, that was in October. Uh, that was... That was in October. Yeah, October, October of 2017. 2017. And we started planning Free the Dream. And we brought an end to Family from the Heart. Yes. And as we brought an end to Family from the Heart, I was like, well, I still want a podcast. So what am I going to do? What is my podcast going to be? Who will my target audio? What am I going to talk about? You know, all of that crazy stuff that rails through your head. And uh, people were hounding Cliff left and right when is this podcast gonna start when stephanie's when podcast is stephanie's podcast gonna start when is it coming when did, so i recorded my first episode just to tell people to back off <laughs> she did you can go listen to it it's episode 001 of thriving mosaic i was just like give me some breathing room i've got a lot going on i've got a lot coming up and yeah i'm busy being I'm, me i'm busy be <laughs> busy being me and <laughs> it was i was like and then he Cliff says, well, you've started now, so <laughs> we just rolled with it from there. Um, that was, I started that early 2018. Mm -hmm. um, in June, July, in July of 2018, I joined the Next Level Mastermind with absolutely no idea what I wanted to do. Like, I still had no idea who I... Freedom. That's all I had. I, freedom. I had freedom. I didn't know how it was going to play out or what it was going to look like. And through some <laughs> pretty crazy hot seats and and questions from from my peers in that group, who Chris just joined. Uh, Chris um, Pavone. Hey. And, Hello, Tom. And so so through through some pretty stuttered times for me. Like they, they felt really stuttered for me. Um, it clearly unfolded and we're planning free the dream and people are asking me what's next. Like, what, what are you doing? What are you working on? And we get down there and I actually have something that I'm working on and I actually have something that I can share with them. And I started the free to thrive mastermind in October of 2018. Just after the just Free after the Dream Free conference. The Dream. It is absolutely amazing. I have four members and two groups. I can't even tell you how incredible it is to watch to watch women break free. Period. You can fill in the blank of whatever it is that they that get, fear get, fear tell us tell us about fear how is fear impacting these women and how have they broken free from it so um without any specifics i know of individuals. i know but but fear that has um so a traumatic event in the past that has literally kept has literally kept her paralyzed from certain from from certain um, activities or or responsibilities or moving forward and taking control because because 
she's so consumed by, by, by that fear. And so coming to free the dream and then joining the mastermind and, and conquering that fear and doing simple tasks that remind her that she is strong and she is in charge and she is in control and absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. Um, one thing that I, I'm privy to there, I mean, and this isn't speaking to anybody individually. So, and this is, a, there's a lot of women who can identify with this, but I remember your, some of your earliest meetings, there are two different women who have had a traumatic life experience that a lot of women have that you personally haven't had. I haven't had. Um, two different women who have had miscarriages. And the way that we were able to... In encourage and and share and be open with that and I think that a lot of times it it gets glossed over and especially when it happened for for them and um, just being able to acknowledge that you know this life was real and it and it meant something and it it does not need to be forgotten it does not need to be pushed away um, and, and the healing that comes from that healing is, is healing is big. Well, you can't have freedom without healing. <laughs> you, you can't. Um, and so and, I just, and I, and I, I question whether or not you can truly have healing without freedom. Well, you have to give yourself the freedom to heal so that you can heal to have the freedom to live. And, and specifically what I love about this, especially in that context, you have to give yourself freedom to actually feel the pain, uh, the anger, because uh, some, sometimes that this is something that happens. I mean, I, I know this has happened uh, specifically in, these in one of these cases, and I've seen it happen for a lot of people. It's like they never felt free to be angry. They never felt free to have a conversation about how they felt their spouse handled this. Mm -hmm. They've never ha they they basically tucked this under the table. They they grieved for a period of time, and then eventually See, tucked I, it under. The I actually would disagree okay, with those words that. because I think that not being able to not being able to publicly grieve mm. leaves you in a constant state of grief. Okay. Um. So it, it's, yeah. But anyway, the, the, the fact so, is, is that there's been significant yeah. healing in the lives of, of the women in your group and the people that you've had this opportunity to connect with. And so, um, and then I, I have, I have, I have one lady in, in my mastermind who is an entrepreneur yep. and, and her sole purpose of, of being her soul, not, not her sole purpose, but her, her, um, draw, like what, um, draws her to me is it, what she resonates with is that I am self-employed, uh, have been with you for, um, over a decade, over a decade. And, um, and my family comes first. Yep. And that's what she desires and that's what she wants and that's what we talk about and that and I'm reassuring her she's doing it. Did you see Dave Jameson just popped in there? Really? I haven't seen Dave Hello that's Dave been Jameson. A long time. Wow. Yeah. I love doing Facebook lives. <laughs> so Stephanie, so I okay. The question I have, and this is more for Rusty. Rusty, by the way, Rusty Ryle is a guy who's, he's our professional copywriter. He help us, helps us write sales materials for sales pages and sometimes email communications to our mailing list. Um, so he's going to be listening to the audio journal version of this. Okay. And he needs, you know, some more background so that he can write up a, a great, compelling description on why, on who should sign up for this free to thrive mastermind and why they should sign up. So briefly tell me wh what is it that these women have in common? Like, like obviously you're, you're the free to thrive mastermind is for women. It is most definitely for women. Okay. So, so men, sorry. Uh, if you want a mastermind group, you have to maybe do a mastermind group with this guy named Cliff Ravenscraft instead, but he's all right. He's all right. He's a pretty smart dude. So, so it's for women, but 
you, you, for example, you said one of them is an entrepreneur. Is this for people who are self-employed or on the path of self-employment? Or It is not. It is for personal development. It is for women ages probably, I don't know, 25 to 50. Okay. Who have, who have a desire to be in an encouraging, uplifting environment to, be, to break free of anything and everything that is holding them back to be who they were truly created to be. Designing the life that they want, living wholly in their purpose. And what if they don't know what their purpose is? What if they're struggling Come to- Come along and we'll help you figure it out. So, so this is for women who, are, who either have a, they have a clear, they have a clear picture of what they're called to do in this world, but it seems like there's a lot of doubt uh, fear, anxiety about that, uh, whether or not they're good enough. There's, there's, they don't, they're not surrounded by other people who believe in them and, and they're not used to people encouraging them. This is an environment where they can come and, and, and have that safe place to we figure have, that stuff or it, to, to actually be, to be motivated, encouraged to pursue that with all their heart. We have absolutely. We have a girl in our group who literally we have her posting positive affirmations about herself all over her house on post-it notes so that when the negative thoughts start, she can counteract them with truth. Okay. So this is where the tie in comes in. So I love, I have my journal here. You want to hear something? This is Joseph McClendon, the third. Yes. who Stephanie and I both know because uh, we went to Unleash the Power Within, a Tony Robbins event. And he, he posted this on Instagram today. Okay. Do you, do you want to, since you're here, can you read okay. that? Yep. A belief is just a set of words, images and experiences that made their way past the conscious mind into the unconscious mind. Anything that is repeated with emotional intensity will become a belief. Decide what you want to believe. See it and say it over and over again with excitement to achieve the life you were created to live. That's you know. okay. Now I will. So the other thing we, the other thing we've had, I've had um, someone do is whenever the I can't do it and the I'm not good enough or you know whenever the th- um, negative thoughts start taking um, taking control, she writes them down and shreds them. I love that. I love so that. that. It's that's the, what it's we're a doing. Pa- pattern interrupt, babe. It's awesome. So, okay, so it's for people who know what they want, but they have lots of well, they have lots of different stuff keeping yeah. them back. Uh, it's like, well, I'm not good enough or um, I don't have the support. It just seems like other people don't get this. They don't understand what I'm doing. They think I should just be content and why rock the boat, that kind of thing. So, it's for women, but it's also for women who have who say, "You know what? I feel like there's something more, but I don't know why I'm here. I don't understand what my identity is. I don't have a dream. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I if if I was meant for anything special. I don't even feel like that special. Is your group for that person as well? Yes. And how and how would how would how would your group help somebody like that? How would my group help someone who doesn't feel special? Yeah, they feel it's we like we give you the constant reminder that you're a badass and you are special. All right. Nobody on this planet is you. You are individual, which makes you special. I need to write that into my journal because I saw this on on uh, Instagram today, and I'm gonna find it as well. Oh, I can't because my you can't. Is your phone's <laughs> my, up my there. phone is right there. <laughs> that was funny. Justin Barkley. Why just women? Because I'm a woman. Yep. As simple as that. I I'm a woman and. I fully wholeheartedly believe that this is something that men need also, but I don't believe that I'm the one to get them there. Yeah. So, so what was it you saw? On so, so it was something about, um, there is nobody else. There is no other you out there. And that is your superpower. Yes. Oh, what what is your superpower? Yeah, is that what you? Isn't was some, that what Winston asked? No, it that? wasn't. That wasn't Winston. This was okay. Justin Barkley. It was a, it was okay. something different. But okay. it was something. It's, it's, you're the only you in the world, and right. that is your superpower. And that is, right. Absolutely, we all are called for a purpose, and not all purposes are the same. 
you know, I'd say we're all we're individuals for a reason. I have not got this language from you, but I've been telling a lot of of people about your mastermind group. And, okay. And and I'm going to run this by you. I, I've been I've probably told about 80 people in San Diego. I'm sharing it with the world, but let me check with you first. Exactly. Or now. So here is what I have been telling a lot of people. I right. I've been saying. You what's gotta wrap this up, dude. You gotta call with Megan in five minutes. Megan's watching us. Megan, I might be a little bit late. <laughs> Um, I'm just kidding. We'll wrap up here shortly. So I've been telling people that Stephanie runs a mastermind group and it's for women. And I talk about the freedom, you know, freedom from performance based Christianity, freedom from traumatic past sexual abuse, freedom, freedom just to discover who you are or to embrace who you are fully, uh, freedom from the expectation. So I get all of that. Yes. But I've also said if, if there's one thing that I think it, this may not be a description of every woman, but certainly if a woman fits this description, this mastermind is a great fit. And I've said it's for women who have devoted a majority of their lives investing and investing in and supporting the dreams of everyone else but themselves. And that may be their children, which is not a bad thing. And it may be their husband's dreams, and that's not a bad thing, but at the expense, unfortunately, and that is the bad that thing. That is the bad thing. At the expense of their own dreams. I would I would say yes, but I also have two young younger women, they're younger than younger than me, um, who maybe we can maybe we can keep them from from losing themselves in the you know we can keep them sacrificing from sacrificing themselves to care for those around them yes you know we um just last week we were um telling telling one that it, it's okay if not everything gets done stop and breathe and just calm down and and you know not the world will not end if everything does not get handled exactly the way you believe it needs to be handled and if it does end and you're still standing that is a miracle within itself exactly awesome so, so stephanie has this group it's uh the free to thrive mastermind group she has two of them it is a group that meets every single week and it's $250 a month for membership. It's an investment into your personal and professional growth, mm -hmm. uh, becoming all that you're created to be. Stephanie creates this amazing environment where you are free to thrive. Maybe that's, that's why you named it that. Maybe that's why I named it that. I think I named it that just because I wanted to stumble over the words every time. Yeah. And, you know. Awesome. Well, baby, thank you so much for joining me for this reflection from the front porch. You're welcome. But your reflections can no longer happen between 2 and 3 on Thursdays. I get that. Also, you would be off limits between 11 and noon on Thursdays. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, anyway, guys, thank you so much uh, for tuning in. Um, you know what? I'm not even going to go on with any more about my, my journal, except for the fact that I do have a physical journal again, and I'm happy to have a physical journal again. And, and maybe at some future time, I'll talk about the, the, the benefits of a handwritten physical journal and why I'm so drawn to it. But I think that we've covered enough in this Facebook live stream, which will also be a vlog episode on my YouTube channel and which is also now an audio journal episode. The audio journal, by the way, is a special. I'm going to go get a chocolate bar. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy your chocolate. Thank you. I love you. Bye, everybody. Bye. I love you too. All right. So, uh, and Gina says, Stephanie's mastermind is worth every penny, she says. Thank you, Gina. All right. So anyway, the audio journal is a audio podcast that I do. It actually has all of the audio from my Facebook live streams or my vlog episodes, but there are also special private 
audio journal subscriber only episodes uh, that that I put out there giving some behind the scenes stuff of what's going on in life and business here in the Ravenscraft household and business. So guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me this afternoon. And uh, I appreciate you guys. Stephanie's Mastermind Group, you can learn more at stephanieravenscraft.com. Just uh, just go to stephanieravenscraft.com or thrivingmosaic.com. No, go to stephanieravenscraft.com. stephanieravenscraft.com is where you'll find uh, information about the free to thrive mastermind, except for the fact that there's no sales page except for just click here to apply. Uh, but Rusty, our great friend and copywriter, he's going he's gonna to be submitting some sales copy for me soon, so that's going to be awesome. Uh, but yeah, it's an incredible experience. If there are any guys out there or anybody uh, who maybe you're either you're full-time self-employed or if you've got the day job and looking to just uh, find a way to, to take your message and build a platform on the side, whatever the case may be, uh, as a business mentor, life coach, and motivational speaker, I also facilitate some mastermind groups. You can email me, cliff at cliffravenscraft.com and ask me what I have available. That's cool. And of course, Stephanie and I both will be hosting an amazing conference yet again this September, our second annual Free the Dream conference. You can learn more about that at freethedream.com. Until next time, my friends, I encourage you to take every single area of your life to the next level. Thanks for hanging out. Bye-bye.